And that decision last night, Tim Sherwood sat where Mercy sat tonight, labelled it a disgusting decision. Alan Shearer said that Newcastle were robbed. Paul, what was your view on it? Yeah, 100% robbed. Yeah, I mean, the rules, they were usually the rules, if it hits your body and then it's your arm, it's not, a, it's not a penalty. You know, it's just phenomenal. The way they show it, VAR, yeah, I just felt for them last night. Massive, massive decision. Could send them out the Champions League. Would have been an unbelievable result for Newcastle United to go to Paris Saint-Germain and win 1-0. Would have gone down in one of the biggest results for them. And it gets blown away by someone who ain't got a clue upstairs. Not a clue. Not a clue. Not a clue. I think they've, they've stepped down, haven't they? It, it, they were removed from duty Oh, tonight. that was good of them, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a bit late now, <laughs> So, so you blame the VAR, not the referee who had the chance to have another look? You know, they're putting the pressure on the, they're putting pressure on the, on the referee. They're, they're passing the buck, in my opinion. What's, how many up there? Two or three? Three? You're asking three people can't make a decision, then you're bringing someone over in front of 60,000, 70,000 people. Just make it up there and take it away from the ref. I thought he'd done well up to then. I thought he'd had an outstanding game. And, but when they showed you the replay again, they showed you more the angle that looked like it just hit his hand and it didn't hit his body. And they should have kept on showing that one. And I think that was where they were wrong as well. I think the one they should have shown, it was so obvious it hit his body and then bounced onto his arm. The other one from behind, it looks like it just hits his arm. But no excuse for me. They have enough times to watch it. It's a shock. I felt sorry for Newcastle. And it's worth... Looking at the rules here at this point, Gary, before I come to you, in the IFAB rules, there's a whole page, of course, on, on handball. This is the key bit for this incident. It's handball if the player, quote, touches the ball with their hand or arm when it is in the position that makes their body unnaturally bigger and when that position is not the result of their body moving fairly as part of play. Was Livermento's body, Gary, unnaturally bigger... Was he moving fairly in the way he was running back into his box? Well, the decisions completely contradicted IFAB's interpretation of the rules or, or, or the wording of the rules. Because if you look at it, you know, not only is he running, he's bringing his arm down at the time. Um, you know, I think in that instance, if, you're, if someone's going to shoot, I think we would all think about that. As someone's going to shoot and your arm's up mm. and it almost makes you bigger and you know that you potentially could block a shot. There's a big difference between a player running, it hitting his stomach first, bouncing up onto the underside of his arm as he's bringing it down, not up. He's bringing it down, he's running. It's a completely natural motion. And, and, and I think that's the bit that frustrates most people. Some of these errors or some of these decisions seem to be very, very straightforward. Mm. And, and, and like Mercer, they completely agree. The fact that... You, the fact that the people in the VAR studio can't make a decision and yet they put the pressure on the referee to have to... I know that's not the intention, but to then have to make the referee go in front of a packed-out stadium in the 97th minute or whatever it was, why? You know, make a decision. Take the pressure away from the referee and, and you know, you're making him have to do what you could do with three of mm, you. I just yeah. don't understand it. It makes no sense. But, but then again, this referee, Tom was in charge of the World Cup final. He was in charge of the Champions League final. He may have been advised to go to a monitor, but should he have been able to say, no, I'm standing by my original decision? Um, yeah, you say that. I mean, the funny thing is, I think he was having an unbelievable game and everyone was saying the same thing. I think even the commentators was, he was, he was there was a lot of moments where there was appealing for penalties, like said Mbappe, et cetera. But I completely agree with the, the boys here. I mean, the whole point of VAI is to kind of, to help the referee. I don't think they've helped him in that situation at all. What they've done is probably added more pressure by saying, oh, no, you go deal with it, go look at the screen in front of 60,000 people, as, as they've said. So I think as soon as he goes to the screen, the crowd start cheering, you've got the, the, the big stars on his back, I think he's only going to make one decision. And um, I feel for Newcastle um, a lot because he was brilliant in the first half, surviving in the second. They the arguably could have done a little bit more with the ball when they won it back. Um, but, yeah, as you said, it could have been a hell of a result. And, yeah, it looks like they, they could be going out now. By the way, we will ask Tom about the incident that he was involved in <laughs> we are, a couple of days ago. I'm afraid, Tom, we will have to come to it at some point shortly. He's took the heat off me. <laughs> but we'll focus on this incident for now. Um, Joby, you know, I mean, VAR was brought in, uh, I think, to, to remove howlers, you know, get more decisions correct and, in theory, improve the game. Is football in any way better off for it for you? No, I think that's the, the straight answer. I was in favour of a, a video system to help referees. I think the problem we're getting now, Jules, is doing exactly the opposite. I think last <coughs> night was a prime example of that. A top referee who had a top game, and even he is now second-guessing himself, thinking, well, hang on, have I got this wrong? Again, I think the clear and obvious is the big issue here for me. I think, yes, use a screen. We all know VR's not going anywhere. 
if you need to say to the referee, go and have a look at it, just say, just go and have a look. We're not going to say it's a massive error, but have another look at it. Give yourself that opportunity. We talked about it, most, didn't we, earlier today, going back to what you said a few weeks ago about if you've got 10 ex-footballers in a room <coughs> that looked at that last night, not one of them is going to say that's handball. Mm. I think the laws aren't helping. So what is handball in yeah. this day and age? Do we actually know what the rules are around the handball? But there's just no way that a referee can go and look at that, in my opinion, and come out with that decision that, Joe, that is handball. The thing is, it's got to a stage, though. As soon as it calls the ref over, the fans are up. They know it's a, they know it's a penalty. Yeah. It's like it's like it's written well, it's law taking now. The power away from yeah, the it's like it's I written law. It's like as soon as they run over, everybody jumps yeah. up going mad. Like. And, that, and that's a top one. So you can yeah. imagine other referees wow, that yeah. haven't got that sort of yeah. stature in the game. It's, the minute they get that shout to say, right, you need to get over to the yeah. screen, the decision's already made before they get yeah. there. And I think that's the big issue. It's not VAR is not helping referees mm. in the way it should be, in my opinion, the way it's being used at the moment. Mm. You got a solution for us, Lee? Um, <laughs> scrap let's it. Scrap it, let's <laughs> get rid of it. <laughs> they're not going to, are they now? No, they're not going to because they've gone so far. And I, I like the fact that they're bringing Simbi in as well, to be honest. <laughs> 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 oh, Stirring the pot. We'll yeah. save that conversation. <laughs> but no, I'm, um, listen, I, 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 I'm, with, I'm with everything that, that, that the guys have said here. You know, there's, there's so much that, you know, you try to digest and try and have an answer for and, and really and truly there is no answer the only thing is we constantly are talking about VAR every single week mm. it, midweek decisions weekend decisions and it's it's spoiling the game Jules and that that's that's the annoying thing because I'm not a Newcastle fan but I'm furious for Newcastle mm. because they worked damn hard last night to go and get a historical result and that decision there you know, we talk about the referee having a fantastic game, but he's got, he has got to make a decision oh, himself, hasn't oh. he? Let's um, just get back to our chat about um, VAR. Um, Paul, it was interesting. <laughs> Lee mentioned um, Simbins, and that's one of the things that was being discussed by Avin. You're shaking your head. Um, but, but actually, they were also looking at ways that possibly they could extend the use of VAR. <clears throat> uh, second yellow cards, free kicks. Are they trying to run before they walk? Should they be focusing on getting this right before starting to extend 100%. It? 100%. You've got to fix this first. This is, not, this is not fixed. As soon as this gets done, then you maybe move on. But for me, no. It's all over the place. You know, as the lads are saying, the, Gary said, the decisions are not even hard. It's not like we're sitting here and half of us are going, oh, it could have been that way or that way. I mean, on a consistent basis, they're getting it horribly wrong. You're talking again, people... They're trying to copy, and I know rugby, rugby's massive, rugby union, rugby league, they're very good at it. They got it off to a tee, they have, and they've been working on it a long time. But their sim bin is massive. You get a sim bin in rugby union or rugby league, you're talking seven to ten points. The game opens up. It's very rare you're not going to get majorly punished for your sim bin. In football... You just sit 10 behind the ball and the game will be killed and then you know, the ball will go out and they'll jog and get the ball and they'll throw it in and they'll, and they'll waste time and then someone else will get simbing and someone else and everybody will be looking at the, at the scoreboard and they'll be going, Tom's coming back on in four, Santos <laughs> coming back on in three and then we'll, we'll, what will we be then? We'll be 10 v 10. And it, that's how it's going to be. That's not football. They're ruining the, they're ruining the game. There was, it didn't have to be changed that much. We're talking the greatest sport in the world and you're trying to change it. Yeah, I, I understand the rugby and the descent. You get a 10-yard penalty in rugby, you get marched 10 yards, that's three points. Massive. Not in football. Football, 10 v 11, doesn't always work. It kills the game sometimes. And for me, you know, we should be looking at not people kicking the ball away, because you can all... Someone kicks the ball away, you go, OK, minute on. It's when people are cheating. That's what we've got to stop. We've got to stop the cheating. You know, and, and that's what they're not looking at. You know, nowadays, people are going over and if they go over and they don't get a penalty, it doesn't matter. But they might as well try their arm with the people upstairs who ain't got a clue, let's be honest. They haven't got a clue. So why wouldn't you charge your arm? You know, I go back to last season, all the way back to the start of the season. I've done Sky, the Sky game at Old Trafford. <clears throat> Ericsson gets the ball in the halfway line. I think Odegaard goes into him. He touches his back, he falls over. They break, Martinelli scores. But because Ericsson goes over... They have to go back. So you might as well fall over and take that chance. If you don't fall over, they don't bother looking. So you fall over, take a chance. They went, oh, yeah, he's a foul. 
If you'd have pushed him in the supermarket, he ain't falling into the frozen chips, is he? I mean, <laughs> it's silly. I mean, it just drives me up. But we're trying to copy a sport that's not like ours. You get majorly punished. Simbins. Oh, so you were a fan then, Paul, to sum up? No, yeah. no, I, I, can't, I can't stand it. I don't know what... Most must go to expensive supermarkets because usually they have a screen <laughs> over the front. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you couldn't go straight in there. Yeah. But I think... But Mercy's exactly right. I mean, when, when you look at the original... I mean, I sat in the meetings in the summer and a lot of the meetings um, around some of these things, the extra time being played, the ball in play time, mm. it was all about the stakeholders that are investing huge amounts in football and making the game cleaner and making the game a better product to watch for everybody. Um, and I understand some of the ramifications of lower leagues and lower league refereeing and, and, and some of the ways that maybe the, the, the pro game can help that. But football's a chaotic game. Isn't it? It's a dynamic game. There's so much joy and so many highs and lows. And I don't think that's been taken into consideration with all these changes. And what it's actually doing now for everybody, for the fans more so, it's taking that joy and taking that spontaneity out of a game. And it's just draining. It feels like it's draining the life out of live matches. Now, I've not been into a stadium live, but I know for the lads who have, everyone's saying yeah. the same thing. It's ruining the enjoyment for the fan, and that was what it was all about. But you said, Gaz, didn't you, being in the Championship, comparing it to the Championship yeah. in the Premier League, is that sometimes you're going to get decisions go for you, and sometimes you're going to... And we don't talk about it as much in the Championship yeah. and, and League One and League Two. Premier League, we're constantly talking about VAR decisions.